Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for either the GRE or the GMAT. We have been solving math problem from both of these books here, and we have finished solving all the math problem from both of these books. If you're interested, if you're preparing for either the GRE or the GMAT, you will find the solutions to all the math problems on my channels. Look for day one through day number 250, both for GRE and for the GMAT. Just type in GRE math or GMAT math, day one through day 250, and you will find the solutions to all the problem, as I said, from both of these books. Right now, we will do some, right now, in this video, we'll do, we will solve some problems that deal with the concept of time and work, which appear in both the GRE and the GMAT. The problem with time and work problem that when they appear in either of these exams is that most people end up solving those questions in a very traditional, very orthodox, very classical, very time consuming manner. There is a faster way, there is a faster way, there is a quicker way, more economical way, which is what we are going to learn right now. We are going to go through perhaps half a dozen problems, maybe even six, or seven, maybe even seven or eight of those problems, one after the other, and we'll see how to solve this problem. Some of them appeared in the GRE, some of them appeared in the GMAT, and we'll do, we'll, we'll do from both of them here. Let's take a look at the very first one. The very first problem that I have in my hand here is the one that appeared in the GMAT, in the book that I just showed you, the GMAT review, the official guide, the 13th edition. In this, in this book here, on page number 179, or rather, page 171, page 171 of GMAT, if you turn to it, and this appeared at problem number 139. This is what it says. It says that A takes, A takes four hours to do a job. To do a job. We are also told that B takes three hours to do the same job. The question simply is, how long will they take to finish the job if they were working together at their respective paces? That's all it is. Of course, in the real exam, the questions are going to be more elaborate. I'm giving you just the just gist of it, just the nub of the whole problem. The nub of the problem is that we have two machines, two workers, two whatever it is. You may even have two faucets. We have a faucet number A and faucet number B, and we are told that when we turn on the first faucet, it can fill up the swimming pool in four hours. We are told that if we turn on the faucet number B, it can fill up the swimming pool in three hours. The question is, if you were to turn on both of the faucets at the same time, how long will it take before the swimming pool is full? It's the same exact situation. You may have two machines, you may have two persons. Does it make, makes no difference. Let's do it. Here are the answer choices. The answer choices, that's the beauty of these questions. The questions, these questions come from a standardized exam, the GRE and the GMAT. Of course, these are multiple choice questions and therefore they are prone to certain uh, manipulations. Certain, they are, they are, they are vulnerable, they, are, they have a weakness and I'll show you the weakness in a second here. Here are the answer choices. A, it says 7 twelfth. B, it says 1 and, one and a half. C, it says 1 and 5 seventh. 1 and 5 7, C says 3 and a half, and D says, or D says 3 and a half, and E says 7. Now if you actually have the book in front of you, if you are preparing for the GMAT, of course you own the book here, and if you do not own this book, purchase one immediately, you're going to need it. This book is indispensable. There is no such thing as preparation for the GMAT without this book, and there is no such thing, in my opinion, the preparation for the GRE without the official revised GRE uh, official guide. There is no such thing, you understand? You must have this book if you're preparing for the GRE. So this is the GMAT problem. If you have this book in front of you, turn to the page. Turn to page number 171 and look at problem number 139. You will see that this is how the answer choices are laid out. Now typically, we do not spend time writing out all the answer choices on the blackboard. I'm doing it here for a reason. The weakness that I alluded to before has to do with how the answer choices are laid out. So here we go. The show is going to begin now, so pay attention. We have two people, person A and person B. Ask yourself, ask yourself, here's the best, best, best case scenario. 
what would have happened? Simple question. Simple question we ask ourselves. What would have happened if both A and B were able to finish the job in three hours? We are told that B finishes the job in three hours. A finishes the job in four hours. In other words, B is faster. What if A all of a sudden started working as fast as B? Well, we know B can do a job in three hours. If A also can finish the job in three hours, then what it tells me is that they can do the, they can, he, he can do a job in three hours. If he can also do a job in three hours, they can both do two jobs, two jobs in three hours. If they both work as fast as the fast one, I'm not writing everything down here because we want to save time, but this best case scenario that we're describing is, one more time I'm going to say slowly, the best case scenario is where both of them start working as fast as the fast guy. Or if you have three guys, all three of them begin to work as fast as the fastest guy. Now here's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is where all of a sudden the faster guy who can finish his job in three hours decides that he wants to work as, as slow as the slow guy and they both take four hours to do a job. Well if A takes four hours to do a job and B also takes four hours to do a job then in four hours they can do two jobs. Two jobs in four hours. Okay, we're getting very close to punchline. Well, if they can do two jobs in three hours in this scenario, the best case scenario, two jobs in three hours, that implies that they can do a job, one job, in hour and a half. In hour and a half. Now, if you're talking about this scenario where they do two jobs in four hours, that implies that they can do a job in two hours. Two hours, half of four. When we do the second question, when we do the second question, we're going to do a whole bunch of them. We're going to do about six or seven of them. I'm not going to go through all this elaborate explaining here because it's very simple. Very simple. If they both work as fast as the fast guy, they can do the job in an hour and a half because in an hour and a half, the first guy is going to do half a job. The second guy is going to do the other half a job. They can finish it. If they both start working as slow as the slow guy, the slow guy takes four hours, which means in two hours, he can do half the job. In two hours, the other guy can do the other half of the job. The bottom line is that, the bottom line, this is the punchline, this is where we get, this is where we want to get to. The bottom line that we need to understand here is that there is no way in hell, there is no way in hell the answer can lie outside this range. Working together, working together, regardless of what they're what they're what the numbers are there, we know that the correct answer, when they're working together, the total amount of time that they will end up taking will has to be somewhere between hour and a half and two hours. It cannot be as low as hour and a half because we know that they are not both working as fast as the fast guy. It can also not be as high as two because we know both of them are not working as slow as a slow guy. Those are just a theoretical uh, curiosity to, to figure out the range. Which means the correct answer, whatever it is, must lie between hour and a half and two hours. Now look at the answer choices. Do you see any ridiculous answers? I'm so excited I'm going to change the color. I'm so worked up I'm going to change the color for the flair of the dramatics. It has to lie between hour and a half and two. If you find an answer choice that lies between that range, it's gone. Seven is nonsense. It's nonsensical. It cannot be three and a half hours. It can also not be one and a half hours because one and a half hours is this end. It, because they are not working, both of them are, both of them are not working as fast as the fast guy. This guy is taking four hours. He can't do the job in three hours. It cannot be hour and a half. It cannot be anything below hour and a half. That is nonsensical. There you go, answer is C. We don't have to do anything here. Nothing at all. The simple logical thinking is what is required here. And yet I have seen many a times where people sit there and try to solve this problem algebraically and they turn it into turn it into a freak show. Don't do that. Now listen, if you're hell-bent, if you're hell-bent on doing this problem properly, because if you feel that uh, what we just did was cheating, and if you're hell-bent on doing it properly, then I can actually show you the proper method very quickly. Even the proper, so-called proper method, there is a way of doing it which is actually more efficient than doing it algebraically. Here's what we do. Here's the second method. We're done with this part. We already know the answer is 1 and 5. One and five. Answer is 1 and 5, 5, 7. Now let's do the second method. In the second method, what we do is, here's the second method. What we do is, we ask ourselves, here we have four, here we have three. What's the least common multiplier? Can you think of a smallest number that is divisible by both four and three? That is evenly divisible by four, four and three. The smallest number that I can think of that is divisible by, by, by both four and three is 12. Ask yourself, how many jobs can A do in 12 hours? A can do in 12 hours, in 12 hours, A can do, where we know he, he takes four hours to do a job. So in 12 hours, he should be able to do three jobs. 
Similarly, in 12 hours, in 12 hours, if B were to work 12 hours, B should be able to do, B can do, B can do, he does, he takes 3 hours to do a job, in 12 hours he should be able to do 4 jobs. He should be able to do 4 jobs. Together, together, what we find is that 3 plus 4, together they can do, together they can do, seven jobs in 12 hours. That's what we conclude. We can, together they can do seven jobs in 12 hours. If they can do seven jobs in 12 hours, that implies that they should be able to do one job in 12 over 7 hours. And 12 over 7, of course, we know is same as 7 over 7 plus 5 over 7, which of course is same as 1 and 5, 7, which is exactly what we found here. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Let's keep on going. Give me a second. Let's do the next one, shall we? And this time we're going to go a little bit faster. We're not going to take that much time, okay? Because if we took this much time in every single problem, the sixth problem will make it a very long video. So here we go. Here we go. Here's the second problem. Second problem comes from, second problem is also a GMAT problem. It comes from page 166. Page 166, number 103. Number 103, something that we have already done. Again, turn to this book, GMAT book, page 166. And the problem that we are about to do is problem number 103. And here's what we are told. We are told that A can do a job in 9 hours. Okay, this time we are going to go very fast. B can do the job in 5 hours, we are told. Well, if A can do the job in 9 hours, if A can do the job in 9 hours and B can do the job in 5 hours, ask yourself what's the best case scenario. The best case scenario is when they both do the job in 5 hours. If A can do the job in 5 hours and B can do the job for the 5 hours, in other words, the best case scenario is where the slower guy all of a sudden begins to work as fast as the fast guy. If the slower guy all of a sudden begins to work as fast as the fast guy, then in 5 hours he can do the job, B can do the job. If this guy can also do the job in 5 hours, working together, both of them, they should be able to do the job in two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. On the other hand, this is the best case scenario. On the other hand, if it turns out that the fast guy all of a sudden decides to work as slow as a slow guy, if person B begins to take nine hours to do the job, just as person A does, well, then in that case, in nine hours, A can do one job, in nine hours, we can do another job. They can do two jobs in nine hours. In other words, to do one job, it will take them as long as four and a half hours. Oh, I think I spoiled the whole thing because I forgot to give you the answer choices. This, that's, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, bloody hell. Because it kills the enjoyment, you see? The whole excitement of the whole thing is that how ridiculous the answer choices are. Because now it's too late in the game. We already know the range. We already know the range is too late now. Here are the answer choices. A, B, C, D, and E. And as you will see, when I put the answer choices, you will see how ridiculous the answer choices are. And these are not something that I'm making up myself. These, as I told you, it's a real question from the real exam. Right here is a book. Turn to page number, turn to page number 166. Question number 103. And that's exactly what it is. And you will see the answer choices that are given to us is 0 0.22. 0 0.22 for crying out loud. It is impossible. It is impossible. Even if both of them work as fast as the fast guy, even in the best case scenario, they will require two and a half hours. If one guy takes five hours to do the job and the other guy also takes five hours to do the job, they will still need two and a half hours. And yet there is an answer slide, point two two, and there, will, and there will be people. There will be people. And when I say there will be people, I mean there will be thousands and thousands of people who, when given the question in the real exam, they would pick that answer, point two two. And the reason they are picking 0.22 is not because they are stupid, that's not the reason. It's because they are, they are so hell-bent, they are so bogged down in solving the problem in a very classical way, very algebraic way, very mechanical way, that when they, make, when they end up making some predictable mistakes, there are four common mistakes that they are looking for. One is the right answer, the other four answer choices, there are five answer choices. One of them, of course, is the right answer, the other four answer choices are the four most popular mistakes. 
And if they end up making one of those four most popular mistakes, their answer will come out to be 0.22. And when they see 0.22 in one of the answer choices, they're very happy. They're very happy that they did all the work, they came up with precisely 0.22, and 0.22 is right there. And it never occurs to them to ask themselves, does it make any logical sense? It is illogical, it is irrational. There is no way in hell, there is no way in hell they can do the job in 0.22. It's impossible. Here's the next, here's the next answer. 0.31. Another ridiculous answer. It's not possible. Here's another one. 0.25. Well, or rather, 2.5. 2.5 is not possible because that's the other extreme. Two, two and a half hours is only possible if they can both do the job in five hours. That is not the case. This guy takes nine hours. So it will never be as low as two and a half. The correct answer, whatever it is, has to lie between two and a half and four and a half, but it can never be two and a half and it can never be four and a half. Two and a half is not possible. I'm going to skip D for the time being. We're going to skip D for the time being, okay, for the flare of the dramatics. And here's the last answer, 4.56. Of course, 4.56 cannot be the answer because we already agreed that two and a, four and a half is the upper limit. It can never be as high as four and a half. That's ridiculous. The correct answer is 3.21. Now, if you try doing this problem in a classical way, algebraic way, and to come up with the precise answer of 3.21, you will see that it will require some time. And that will be the waste of time, sheer waste of bloody time during the exam. Every precious second that you spend doing silly things, things that are not needed, that are gratuitous, that are superfluous, is a, a second that you're taking away from other problems. Of course, you know already, I'm, I'm pointing out the bloody obvious, obviously. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do one more. Let's do the one more. Before I forget it, I put down this word here, nub, and I never actually explained the word, N-U-B, nub. What we are doing here, we're not writing down the entire question as they appear in the exam, because of course they are very long-winded and they, they, were, they make it very technical and very intimidating. I'm just putting the nub of the problem on the, on, the, on the blackboard. The nub, the gist, the essence, the core, the main idea, the central idea of the question, of question, which is simply, we have two people, one guy takes this much time, the other guy takes that much time, how long will they take if they work together? That's the nub of the whole question. Regardless of how they actually phrase it, there is the nub of it. For example, here, the problem that we just finished here, one guy takes nine hours, the other guy takes five hours. In the real questions, when you look it up, you will see that there are no guys there. These are two faucets, and they are filling up the swimming pool. One faucet takes nine hours, the other, other, other faucet takes five hours to the swimming pool. The question was, how long will it take to, for them to fill the swimming pool if they, were to, if they were turned on together at the same time? Well, it will take them precisely 3.21 hours. That's it. We learned this word nub in our vocabulary lessons on day number. Day number 11. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be, regardless of whether you are preparing for the GRE or the GMAT or the SAT for that matter, or SAT, uh, it's good to have decent vocabulary. If you need, uh, if you are interested in improving your vocabulary, you can, you, can, you can work with me. I'm in the process of improving my vocabulary and you will find these words that we learned on day number 11. Just type in vocabulary words. Uh, type in either GRE vocabulary words or GMAT vocabulary words, day 11, and the video will pop right up. And if you ever have trouble finding something, put in also my name. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day 11, along with my name, Kashwani, and the video will pop right up. Watch that video and learn that word, NUB, N-U-B, NUB, which means the gist, the essence, the main idea, the main thesis, the core, the central point of the whole thing. The central point of the whole thing is right here. Everything else that they put in the exam is just there to annoy you, to intimidate you, to fill up the space. Obviously, not, they're not going to present the question in such a simplistic way. They want to look sophisticated, obviously. Let's do one more, shall we? Enough of the talk. Let's do one more. Number three. Number three, this time we're going to have two people. This time we'll have two people and see how, you'll see how fast it goes. I'm going to read. I don't think this is getting too crowded. Here's number, question number three. A can do a job in 10 hours. B can do the same job in 15 hours. How long together? How long? 
together. Here are the answer choices A, B, C, D, and E. 3, 5, 6, 7 and a half, and 10. I just realized that the question that we just finished, we did look at the right answer, but that was that was purely by chance. We got lucky there that we were able to we, were, we got lucky that we were able to get rid of the four answer choices out of five, but of course that's no guarantee, obviously. That's just, 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 just a pure luck. It doesn't happen all the time. In most cases, you'll be able to get rid of at least, you, in most cases, you'll be able to get rid of the, about two or three answer choices. And a very, it is very, very rare that you're able to knock out four answer choices. So, of course, we do have to know how to do the problem in the proper method, which I forgot to do, which we'll go back and take care of in a second. Let's first finish this one up. We go, we're going to go back in number two and finish it up properly. So one guy takes 10 hours, other guy takes 15 hours. These are the answer choices. It's very simple. If both, I'm going to start, pick up speed and see how long it takes. If both of them work as fast as the fast guy, they will do the job in five hours. Because in five hours, A can do half the job and B can do half the job. If both of them decide to work as slow as the slow guy, the slow guy takes 15 hours. So in seven and a half hours, he will do half the job. In another seven and a half, uh, another seven and a half, B will do the other half. Which means this is our range. This is our range between five, between five and seven and a half. Any any answer choice that falls outside that range is balderdash, is hogwash, it's just it's just too silly. It is insane, inane. Do you understand? It's just uh, moronic. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's just it makes no sense. You understand? It's illogical. Anything that falls outside this range, it cannot be three, it cannot be five. Five is the outermost limit. It cannot be seven and a half. It cannot be ten. Voila, the answer is C. That's it, you're done. Now, let's, let's do the other way if you like. Just in the event, just in the event, that in the exam, you're not able to get rid of the four answer choices. Perhaps you got rid of only three answer choices, or perhaps you got rid of only two answer choices. But you will be able to get rid of minimum of the two answer choices. Minimum of the two answer choices you can get rid of just by doing what we just did here. Many times, in most cases, you are able to get rid of, the, you are able to get rid of as many as three answer choices. In which case, you're down to 50-50. Even if you don't want to do any more work, if you don't have the time, 50-50 chance for not, for not having done any work is a damn good chance. It's a bloody good chance. Do you understand? Let's do it together. It's very simple. We have 10 here. We have 15 here. We have to find some, some number, which is, a, which is a common multiple, least common multiple, a number that we can divide evenly 10 into and a number that we can divide 15 into. The, number, the smallest number that I can think of is 30. You can use 60. 60 would do the job. 30 would do the job. 600 would do the job. And so will 60 billion. If you keep the number small, you will have to do less work. So I'm going to pretend it's 30. We're going to do 30 hours. Well, in 30 hours, in 30 hours, A can do, well, A takes 10 hours. A can do three jobs. In 30 hours, in 30 hours, B can do, B can do two jobs because it takes him 15 hours to do the job. So if you give him 30 hours, he can do two jobs. That tells us they can do five jobs. They can do five jobs in 30 hours. Well, there you go. We're done. Five jobs in 30 hours. That implies that they can do one job in 30 over five or six hours. Voila. Now let's go back and finish up the last one that we did not get a chance to finish. I, I forgot about it. I moved on to the third one. I hope and pray to God that this video does not become too long where it begins to bore the pants out of people. Do you understand? That would not be nice. And in the event that you feel like that's a distinct possibility, then it's, I would advise you to have a decent knicker on, just on the off chance that it does bore the pants off you. Let's do the next, let's do number two. Here's what, here's what it was. We were told that A, A did nine hours, A did it in nine hours and B was five hours. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to give you a simple version here. Nine and five, the least common multiplier would be 45. So in 45 hours, in 45 hours, A can do, A can do five jobs. And in 45 hours, in 45 hours, B can do, since B takes 5 hours to do a job, in 45 hours it will do 9 jobs. 9 plus 5 is 14, that means they can do, 
they can do 14 jobs, 14 jobs in 45 hours. 14 jobs in 45 hours, which means they can do one job in 45 over 14. And this is where the things get prickly. I'm going to have to put the answer choices again back on the blackboard. A, B, C, D, E. We have 2.32, 2.31. Uh, 0.31, two and a half, two and a half, three point two one, and four point five six. So listen, what happens here? We know, we know that forty five. We know that forty five over fifteen. We know forty five over fifteen is exactly three. Since this is forty five over fourteen, instead of fifteen, it is forty five over fourteen. That tells us that this answer is slightly more than three. Slightly more than three. Slightly more than three, pick one answer choice that you see, there is slightly more than three, hint, hint, D. There is your answer. That's all. Let's go to the next one, number four. I have seven questions that I have made here. I'm not sure if I want to do all seven of them or if I want to start with after three or four. Let's do num number four. A takes seven hours to do a job. It's getting quite tiring. You know what it is. A takes seven hours to do a job. B takes B takes three hours to do to do the same bloody job. You understand? Of course. Uh, obviously, it's the same job. The question is, how long together? How long? How long together? Now, I'm leaving out a one important word from this question for, for a reason here, on purpose. Let me first give you the answer choices. The answer choices are A, B, C, D, and E, two-third, one and a half, two, three and a half, and five. One word that I left out, which is what you have to pay attention to the real exam, because sometimes they use the word and sometimes they don't. Here the question actually says, how long will it take them approximately? The question says, approximately how long will they take to finish the job together? If you see the word approximately, that's your cue that the exact answer, the correct answer, if you were to do the exact number, it will not match any of these things. We have to find the one that comes closest to it. Let's do the thing. Let's just do it, okay? We're taking too long. Seven hours for one guy. If both of them took seven hours each, they can do the job in three and a half hours. Three hours for this guy, if both of them work as fast as the as second guy, they can do the job in hour and a half. Because in hour and a half, B will do half the job in hour and a half, A will do the half the job if A started working as fast as B. Correct answer, whatever it is, has to lie in this range, between one and a half to three and a half. Anything that falls outside it is wrong. It cannot be two, two thirds, that's silly. It cannot be one and a half, because one and a half is the other end there. It cannot be one and a half. It cannot be three and a half. Three and a half is, 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 our, is the other end. It cannot be three and a half, and obviously it cannot be five. The answer is two. The answer is two. Now let's do it together. Now, now, now let's do it together. Let's do it together, assuming that in a real exam, the answers were presented in such a way that you were unable to get rid of the four answer choices. Let's see what we can do. It's very simple, of course, by now. It's very simple, obviously. You pretend that they're going to work 21 hours. They pretend, you pretend that they're going to work 21 hours because 21 is the smallest number that you can think of that we can divide by 7 and 3. Of course, you could use 42 or you could use 42 billion if you want. But as I pointed out before, that would be bloody silly. Do you understand? So in 21 hours, in 21 hours, A can do, A can do three jobs. In 21 hours, B can do, B can do seven jobs. Together, together they can do ten jobs. They can do ten jobs, ten jobs in 21 hours. They can do ten jobs in 21 hours. That implies that they should be able to do one job in 21 divided by 10. 21 divided by 10 is approximately 2. 21 divided by 10 is approximately 2. Of course, the exact precise answer is 2.1. But the way the answer choices are laid out, hence the use of the word approximate. Let's do, one. Let's do the next one, number five. 
I'm not looking at the back of the camera. I don't want to see it because if I go to the back of the camera, I'll stop. So let's just keep on going. Number five. If you're still watching it, obviously you find it beneficial. Some people will find it beneficial because this is how you get the practice. And once you do all of these questions with me, I have, as I said, about six or seven of them. Once you do the, all of these questions with me, then you will see that from this point on, the work time problem that you see in the GRE and the GMAT will be, will be a cinch. Because the exam, the work time problem that appear in the GRE and the GMAT are the very simplest one. They do not give you a very complicated one, as you saw the examples here. Let's do the next one. A can do, A can do in three hours. B can do in five hours. So now I'm getting quite lazy. A can do a job in three hours. B can do the exact same job in five hours, working at their respective constant pace is how they will phrase it. Question is how long together? How long together? Let's look at the answer choices, shall we? A is 8.15, B is 7.8, 1 and 7.8, C is 2, D is 2 and a half, and E is 4. Listen, what I'm about to say, I realized just now that it's a bit too late actually to point this out in the game. It's a, it's a, it's a bit too late. I forgot to tell you earlier in the, in, in the story. Pause the video. As soon as I set up the problem, pause the video immediately. At least start doing it now so you can do number 5, 6, and 7 together uh, by yourself. Pause the video immediately, solve it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together, okay? For the next three videos. This one, number 6, and number 7. So here we go. If, they work, if both of them work as fast as a fast guy, they can do the job in an hour and a half. Half of three. If both of them work as slow as a slow guy, they can do the job in two and a half. Half of five. Here's our range. Hour and a half to two and a half. Uh, hour and a half to two and a half. Anything that falls outside it is nonsensical. Again, I need my red color. It cannot be 815. That's just silly. That's just silly. It cannot be... Well, it could be two actually. It can be two. It could be this guy. Oh, this is getting interesting. But it can be two and a half. It can be two and a half. That's just silly. And obviously, it cannot. It most certainly cannot be four. So the answer is either B or C. Now, if something like this happens in the exam, then it's a call that you have to make. It's a call you have to you have to make depending on your mood, depending on your energy, depending on the time that you have, depending on the amount of time that you want to invest in this problem uh, from this point on. If you feel that you don't have the time, if you're pressed for time, uh, if you just want to move on, then flip a coin and move on. A 50-50 chance on a problem where you did not do any work at all, you don't have to do any work at all. You just look at it. And in a matter of split seconds, you can figure out that the answer has to lie between an hour and a half and five and a half hours. You can knock out three answer choices right away in a matter of 10 seconds. And for 10 seconds worth of work, if you can raise your odds to 50-50, that's a pretty damn good deal. Do you understand? That's a bloody good deal, for, in my opinion. Let's do, let's do it together. Let's do it together. And of course, doing it together, of course, by now, you also know, it's not that complicated. It's a very simple scenario. We're going to pretend that they work 15 hours. In 15 hours, in 15 hours, A can do, A can do, if A takes 3 hours to do job, in 15 hours, he can do 5 jobs. In 15 hours, in 15 hours, B can do 3 jobs. They can do seven jobs in 15 hours. Seven jobs in 15 hours. If they can do seven jobs in 15 hours, they should be able to do one job in 15 over seven hours, which is same as seven over seven plus, uh, it would not be seven over seven. Did I make a mistake here, 15 hours? Oh, this is 8. 5 plus 3 is 8, not 7. This wasn't making any sense because this would have been more than 2. And uh, we just said it cannot be more than 2. I made a mistake here. 5 plus 3 is 8. Which is why, you see, this helps. This tells me that what the ridiculous answers are. They're gone. I'm not tempted anymore by anything. It's 15 divided by 8. 15 divided by 8, which is 8 over 8 plus 7 over 8. Which is simply 1 and 7, 8. 1 and 7, 8. Which is our answer choice. B. 1 and 7, 8. That's all. Now who do you suppose is going to pick this answer? 5 over 18. You see, we got 8, 15 over 8, 15 over 8. We got 15 over 8 here. And these are the people who do the problem in a very classical way. 
very traditional way, very algebraic way, and then they forget to and they forget to think rationally. They, they forget to think logically. They do all the work, and purely by mistake, instead of coming up with the answer of 15 over 8, they come up with the answer of 8 over 15. And they never stop to think for a second. They never stop to think for a second. They never, they never stop to. They never pause to ask themselves, does it make any sense? How can they possibly do it in less than one hour? Even if both of them work as fast as the fast guy, it will still take them an hour and a half. It cannot take them less than an hour. Answer is either B or C, and we just found out that it is actually 1 and 7, 8, because it is not 8 over 15, it is 15 over 8, which is 1 and 7, 8 right here. Let's do one more. Number 6, the penultimate one, second to the last one. The penultimate one, the second to the last one. Number six. And when did we learn the word penultimate? I do not know, but we learned it. Penultimate, in case you're interested in learning that word. That was also day number 11. What do you know? That's a fluke. Oh, that is just a fluke. Number, number six, is it? A does the job in three hours. B does the job in two hours. Here are the answer choices. Five, six, one, one and one fifth. One and one half and two and a half. A, B, C, D, and E. You pause the video and you do it yourself. A can do the job in three hours, B can do the job in two hours. How long will they take to do the job together? Well, if they, if they both work as slow as slow guy, it will take them an hour and a half. If they both work as fast as the fast guy, it will take them exactly one hour. It has to be in this range. The correct answer has to lie between one and one and a half hours. Anything that lies outside it is nonsensical. Answer cannot be 5 6. Answer cannot be 1 because 1 is the lower limit. It cannot be hour and a half. It cannot be 2 and a half hours. The answer is C. The answer is C. And again, of course, if you want to do it, if you want to do it the proper way, you can do it very quickly. It doesn't take that long at all. This is 3 hours, this is 2 hours. Let's make them work 6 hours. In 6 hours, in 6 hours, A can do A can do two jobs. In six hours, B can do three jobs. They can do five jobs. They can do five jobs in six hours. Well, if they can do five jobs in six hours, that implies that one job should take six over five hours, six fifth hours, six fifth hour, which is the same as one and one fifth. One and one fifth, one. Which is exactly what we what we had we had come to conclusion just by doing it rationally, logically. Let's do one more. In the next two questions, number seven and number eight, I'm going to make it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more prickly. A, a, a scenario which doesn't happen very often, but it does appear in the exam once in a while, where there are three actors in this story, there are three protagonists. Uh, instead of A and B, now we introduce uh, per Mr. C. Let's see what happens. A can do a job in 12 hours. B can do the same job in 15 hours. C can do the same job in 10 hours. Again, the question is, how long together? How long will they take if they were to work together? Let's find out. Shall we first the answer choices? A, B, C, D, E. Three, four, four and a half, five, and six. And they're not using, in this particular question, and it appeared in the exam, they did not use the word approximate. That the, had there been a word approximate in the problem, I would have written it here. This is it. These are the answer choices. Okay, stay with me in this story. If all three of them work, started working as fast as the fast guy, listen very carefully, I'm not going to write everything down because it's already a very long video. If all three of them started working as fast as the fast guy, as, uh, not, not as fast as the fast guy, but rather as fast as the fastest guy, because there are three of them now, we need to use the superlative. 
If all three of them begin to work as fast as the fastest guy, the fastest guy is this guy. Mr. C can do the job in 10 hours. So if all three of them could do the job in 10 hours, then in 10 hours A would do one job, in 10 hours B would do another job, a second job, job number two, and C would do job number three. In other words, in 10 hours they can do three jobs. Working together, they should be able to do one job in 10 over three, or three and one third. That's the lower limit. Similarly, if they all decided to work as slow as the slowest guy, the slowest guy is Mr. B. Mr. B is the slowest one. This is the fastest one. I don't know why I have to point out the bloody obvious. 15 hours. If all three of them take 15 hours to do the job, then in 15 hours, A will do one job, B will do one job, C will do one job. They can do three jobs in 15 hours, which means if they, work, if they were to work together, they can do one job in five hours. So our range is three and one-third to five. Anything that lies outside it is nonsensical. Three and three and one-third and five, it has to be that. Let's see what, what falls outside. Three and one-third, three falls outside it. Five is the upper limit. That cannot be five, it cannot be six. It's got to be either four or four and a half. That's it. Those are the only two answer choices that are left. You have a choice here, you can either flip a coin and pick one and move on if you don't have the time or if you don't want to invest any more time in it, or you can do some more work. Some more work is again very straightforward, so let's do some more work. Find the smallest number that you can divide evenly uh, by 10 and 15 and 12. Can you think of a smallest number? That's the tricky part. Think of a smallest number that, you can, that is divisible by 10, 12 and 15. The smallest such number, the least common multiplier is called LCM, is 60. 60 is, the, 60 is the magic number. In 60 hours, in 60 hours, A can do, well, A takes 12 hours to do the job. If he takes 12 hours to do one job, and if you give him 60 hours, he should be able to do five jobs. Similarly, B does the same, jo does the same job in 15 hours. Well, if you give him 60 hours, in 60 hours, in 60 hours, B should be able to do four jobs because it takes him 15 hours to do one job 15 times 4 is 60 if you give 60 hours if you give 60 hours to the fastest guy the fastest guy C he only takes 10 hours well therefore in 60 hours they can do six jobs together they can do 4 plus 6 is 10 10 plus 5 is 15 jobs you see what you already see what the answer is you already see what the answer is they can do 15 jobs, 15 jobs in 60 hours. Of course, they can do one job in 60 over 15, which is 4. The answer is B, not 4 and a half. Let's do one last one. Let's do one last one. Okay, one last one. This one is also going to have three actors. We will have A, B, and C, so here we go. I just need a quick break. I'm going to put it on the blackboard, then pause the video, do it yourself. First, the answer choices. First, the answer choices, because answer choices are, answer choices are, are more fun. In these kinds of questions, the fun part is not the question itself, but how the answer choices are laid out, because that will determine how you will play the game, you see? A is two-third, B is one, C is one and two-third, D is two, and E is two and a half. We have three actors, we are told that A can do the job in two hours. We are told that B can do the job, the same job obviously, in three hours. And we are told that C can do the exact same job in five hours. The question here is approximately how long? They use the word approximately. In other words, the answer, the, the exact answer is, is, not, is not one of these answer choices. We have to find one answer choice that comes closest to it. Pause the video, do it yourself. So here we go. If all three of them work as slow as the slow guy, slow guy takes five hours to do the job. If all three of them work as slow as the slow guys, then they should take five and third hour. 
because in five hours A can do one job, in another five hours B can do another job, in five hours C can do one job, so they can do three jobs in five hours, three jobs in five hours, the same as one job in five over three. Similarly, if they were to all work as fast as the fastest guy, fastest guy takes only two hours. Therefore, they should take a third of the time if they all started working at the same pace, if they all started working as fast as the fastest guy. The correct answer, whatever it is, has to lie between five-third and two-third. Between five-third and two-third. Let's see what we can do. Well, it can be exactly two-third. It can be exactly two-third. That's, that's, that's the lower bound. 5 third, which is 1 and 2 third. Well, it can be exactly 1 and 2 third. Well, there you go, we are done. It can be 2. 2 is more than that. 2 is more than 1 and 2 third. And this is silly. The answer is B. The answer is B. Now, let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it together. What do you want to pick for the, for the, what do you want to pick for the number of hours that you want to allot them? Well, we have a 2, 3, and a 5. What's the smallest number that you can think of that you can divide by 2, 3, and 5? 60 comes to mind. We could do 60. Uh, or we can do 30. We can divide 30 by 2, we can divide 30 by 3, we can divide 30 by 5. Let's do 30. In 30 hours, A can do 15 jobs. In 30 hours, B can do 10 jobs. In 30 hours, C can do well, C takes 5 hours, therefore in 30 hours you can do 6 jobs. 15 plus 10 is 25, 25 plus 6 is 21. They can do 21 jobs. They can do 21 jobs in 30 hours. Okay, stay with me in the story. 21 jobs in 30 hours. I think something has gone wrong here. Did I make a mistake in my, in my edition? I must have made a mistake in my edition because what I'm getting here does not fit with this thing here. 15 plus 10 is 25, 25 plus 6 is, well if 15 plus 10 is already 25, then plus 6 cannot be bloody well 21, can it? It's 31. 31 jobs in 30 hours, obviously, therefore that implies that they can do one job, they can do one job in 30 over 31 hours. 30 over 31 hours, the closest one that you can find which is 30 over 31, 1 is approximately 30 over 31. The answer is B. That was it. We finally did it. I've been meaning to do these questions for the longest time, and I kept procrastinating and procrastinating, and finally, today was the day. I hope you found it helpful. Right? We'll pick up our, uh, we are in the process of doing the GMAT problem. In our next video, we'll pick up from where we are. As I said, the GRE problems, all the problems, every single math problem that appears in the GRE has already been done. Just look for all the solutions from day 1 through to 50. And soon, I will do GRE quantitative comparison questions. Exclusively, you will find a separate playlist which will say GRE quantitative comparison questions, which I'll begin as soon as I finish with my project with the GMAT. Okay? Good luck to you on the exam. Bye now.